All right, let's begin. This is Kyle Johnson mic'd up. You can find my work on Twitter at kjohnson mic'd up. You can find my work on my website, kylejohnsonmic'dup.wordpress.com. And I'm basically going to leave you with this. There's only one thing that describes this morning, and that's fucking United Liverpool. Liverpool look like shite. And yes, you Liverpool fans, I won't let you uh, stand alone. I won't let you stand alone. Could use a fucking cigarette right now. And I will say, no biasness. If you go to a fucking match at Anfield... In Liverpool, it's probably one of the fucking greatest moments when they sing, you'll never walk alone in any sporting event, to start a sporting event. And when they win, to end a sporting event, it's absolutely a magnificent fucking moment. Well, I got news for you, fucking Liverpool. You're going to be walking back to the fucking clubhouse fucking alone after United steals three points from you today. Not really. I'll jump into my plays of the day here for the Liverpool-United match right off the hop. It's basically a pick em game. Right now, Liverpool sitting at plus 170. Manchester United sitting at plus 170. The draw is sitting at plus 230. Actually, we've seen a little bit of movement towards Liverpool. It's been kind of getting shaken up. About a half an hour ago, it was plus 170 each, plus 170 now, plus 175 now for Liverpool. 230, plus 230 for the draw, plus 180 for Manchester United. Now, I like the draw. I think it's going to be a 1-1 draw. I really fucking do think it's going to be a 1-1 draw. 
I like the under more than anything. I think if one of these two uh, clubs do come away with three points, it's not going to be a very uh, thrilling game for the neutrals, but it's going to be fucking intense. As it always is when fucking United makes their fucking, what, 40 minute trip down to fucking Liverpool. So I like the under two and a half in this game. It's sitting at minus 125 right now. And I like the draw at plus 230. So that's what I got. That's where I'm going on this match. Now United, they haven't fucking played anybody fucking tough. This is their first fucking real match of the fucking season. Before this, what, Leicester? Leicester was our biggest fucking match in the fucking Premier League. Well, this is going to fucking uh, up the ante by 10 times. 10 times. This is the fucking arch rival. The fucking history is fucking... The history is not only huge between the two clubs on the fucking pitch, but the history is huge between the two cities off the pitch. If you aren't aware, a big part of the rivalry between these two clubs is that Liverpool used to have one of the biggest port cities on the fucking north, on the, uh, north side of fucking England. And they, uh, you know, create a lot of jobs with it. There's a lot of business. Liverpool was booming. It helped create Liverpool what it was, their shipyards. Well, Manchester, about 40 minutes or so down the fucking river, was saying, well, fuck this shit. We need to create some jobs. We need to have our fucking city prosper. So they fucking built a shipyard and fucking took a bunch of the fucking... Uh, profit from the uh, shipyard in Liverpool, and that really is what created the fucking animosity between the two fucking cities, the animosity between the two clubs. We've had some fucking great matches between these two fucking clubs. I'll never forget Michael Owen scored against his former fucking club to give United the victory. Dimitar Berbatov scoring with a fucking, you know, it wasn't a true fucking bicycle kick. It wasn't a fucking Wayne Rooney bicycle kick against Manchester City, but it was a fucking... Uh, it, it was a three-quarter fucking bicycle kick, but who would have thought that fucking would have went in? Dimitar Berbatov. Who would have thought he would have fucking won a fucking... Uh, helped us win a few fucking championships? Everybody was a little tighter around the collar when Berbatov showed up. But hey, no fear in the Bulgarian. No fucking fear. He fucking had complete confidence in himself. Fucking love Dimitar Berbatov. It was a fucking fun one to fucking watch. Dirk Kite's fucking hat trick. I'll never forget that. When I thought, you know. Surely. Surely we would have had it. You know, this was in Liverpool. This was in Anfield. Dirk Kite's one of my favorite fucking players of all fucking time. Fucking hustler. The only problem is he shouldn't be anywhere near the fucking Holland. Fucking the, uh, the Dutch fucking national team. And uh, when you see the likes of Dirk Kite still there and Ryan Babel and shit like that, you know the Dutch are fucking in trouble, and that's why they missed two major tourneys in a fucking row. I should actually fucking play some of these fucking for you, to be quite fucking honest with you. Since we're in that fucking mood right now. Oh, some are fucking videos, some are just images. That kind of fucking sucks. Luis Suarez, Patrice Evra fucking battle with the uh, alleged racial slur by Luis Suarez. And with Luis Suarez's fucking background, I wouldn't be shocked if he fucking said it. He's a fucking biter. If you're a fucking biter, you'll probably do just about anything to get under the fucking skin of an opponent. And that's the beauty of fucking football, though, is the players will put their own fucking reputation on the fucking line just to win. Anything to fucking win. We're going to see it tonight. It's going to be a little bit of, I mean, this morning, it's going to be a chippy fucking affair. I'm up early. Actually, I haven't even went to bed yet, to be quite honest with you. Coffee's been keeping me the fuck up. United fans won't forget Steven Gerrard's final moment in a fucking Reds jersey against Manchester United when he got fucking red carded fucking 30 seconds into the second half. That was a fucking beautiful moment. Fucking very beautiful fucking moment. Now, Liverpool did get the last laugh in Europa League in 2016. Led by Cortinho and Firmino and the fucking boys. The boys that are still there right now. Now lately, the matches have been fucking going under between these two clubs. We've seen the excitement. We've seen fucking the classic fucking nail-biter, fucking intense fucking matches. Gary Neville fucking going nuts, fucking grabbing the badge after his fucking big goal. 
So, whew! Whew! I'm fucking... I wish I was there. I never got to Liverpool when I was in England. One of the fucking big stadiums I didn't get to go see. I would have loved to have seen it. I would have loved to have taken the one smoke fucking walk between fucking Goodison Park and fucking Anfield. The history of the fucking city. Now we got Jose Mourinho versus Jurgen Klopp. Jurgen Klopp. So that's fucking hell of a fucking, uh, you know, it's not, it's going to be feisty on the, if you think it's going to be feisty on the fucking pitch, it's going to be just as feisty in the fucking managerial technical areas and shit. You know Mourinho's going to fucking jab at Jurgen. Here and there, and you know Jurgen Klopp, you know uh, Klopp's not gonna fucking, uh, I always say Klopp, Klopp, Klopp's not gonna fucking back down. There's no backing down in that fucking German, I can tell you that much. I'm a big fucking Jurgen Klopp fan, so it does fucking suck to see him fucking managing fucking Liverpool. I did like what he did over at Borussia Dortmund, even though Bayern Munich were just plucking all their fucking best players all the fucking time. And that just helps Bayern Munich stay where they fucking are, it's fucking bullshit. Hey, I'll play a little fucking video. Yeah, fuck off. We all remember when Diego Forlan made his a. Uh, uh, it was a big disaster with him coming to United. But Diego Forlin, you know, he's a laughing stock. But hey, man, all things were pointing towards Jersey Dudak. Remember Jersey Dudak, man? Remember the fucking Champions League final with him fucking waving his fucking arms against fucking AC Milan? That was a fucking hell of a fucking match, though. I can tell you that much, man. That was one of the more thrilling and exciting fucking European finals you'll ever fucking see with Liverpool making the comeback in the second half. But I won't remember. I won't forget anytime soon. Diego Forlan's long range fucking effort that beat Jersey Dudak after he had already fucked up after fucking Jamie Carragher. Yes, the Jamie Carragher. I'm not a fucking Jamie Carragher fan at all. I always thought Jamie Carragher fucking sucked as a center back, and I think he sucks as a fucking pundit even more. The only good thing about fucking the British fucking football players become pundits and shit is they just speak their fucking mind. They are fucking, they are fucking good that way, man. They are good that way. Not like the fucking, you see these former NHLers and former fucking NFLers and shit become pundits and shit. They just fucking toe the company line. So those are some fucking great fucking moments. Those are the fucking chants for you. That's, you'll never fucking walk alone. You know the fucking what's at stake between these two clubs. It's not just fucking three points. It's fucking bragging rights between the two cities. It's bragging, right, bragging rights between the two supporters. I'm not quite sure which derby. I still call it a fucking derby. I know, know what one I like better. The Manchester derby or fucking Liverpool United. Liverpool United. That's all you gotta fucking say. United, Liverpool, Liverpool United. And anybody that knows the world of fucking football knows exactly what the fuck I'm talking about. So anyways... Let's break this game down a little bit. As I said, I like the fucking under two and a half. I like the fucking draw in this match. Last five meetings between these two clubs, all the fucking matches have gone under. Liverpool's defense, it's starting to come together. It's not going to be fucking great. It's always going to be suspect all fucking year. They walked into fucking Spartak Moscow over in Russia, held them to one goal on the road against Newcastle. Who's always fucking tough. And how can I fucking not talk about Newcastle when we talk about Liverpool? It's a lot like when fucking Leaf fans talk about fucking Aston Matthews' four-goal night. Austin Matthews, is, she scored four goals in his first game. I'm like, well, did you win the fucking game? They're like, no. A lot of people say the 4-3 fucking comeback victory fucking uh, by Liverpool over fucking Newcastle in 1996, which dashed, dashed. It stuck a knife into the fucking heart of all the fucking Magpie fucking supporters. Stuck a knife in the fucking heart of Kevin Keegan. I swear he was never the fucking same again. Because that fucking ended Newcastle's fucking hopes of winning the Premier League. And allowed fucking Liverpool's arch rivals to win the fucking Premier League. So you gotta ask yourself, is it the greatest game ever fucking played Liverpool supporters when you allowed your arch rival to fucking once again hoist the fucking silverware? Something you guys have not been able to do in the fucking Premier League? It's been what? 
Almost fucking 30 years since you guys won the fucking league. Oh, this is even better. I just fucking stumbled upon this. This has a fucking countdown. It's been 27 years, 161 days, 13 hours, 37 minutes, and exactly 25 fucking seconds since Liverpool's last one to fucking leave. Beautiful. Beautiful. I'm actually going to fucking bookmark this fucking site, to be quite honest with you, so I can always go look at it, since United had to take down the fucking banner of the last time City had fucking won anything. Yes, won anything. That was a fucking, uh... A great day in Manchester, to say the least. And it's always a great day in Manchester because it fucking rains all the fucking time. So anyways, the last five meetings between these two clubs have all gone fucking under. Manchester United has not played a fucking tough opponent. Uh, this season. Let's see if I can fucking pull this up fucking real quick. Uh, I'll go through here just in a second here of uh, who exactly Manchester United has fucking played so far. Which it, it isn't an overpowering fucking list, man. Like I said, Leicester City maybe was our fucking, was quite possibly our fucking uh, toughest fucking opponent to date. Now, obviously it's going to be a fucking... You know when you're trying to find something and it just never fucking wants to work? There we go. The site always never lets me down. <sighs> Alright. So we opened up against West Ham 1-4-0 United. They were in Swansea. No troubles. So then we hosted Leicester, which I think was probably our toughest match of the season so far. We were away on Stoke. Stoke's a good club. Mark Hughes has them playing well or fucking attacking a lot more. They have a fucking, uh, they have a closet of fucking very fucking solid players with, with the, uh, the Hesse's and the fucking uh, Shakiris of the fucking world. Kind of fucking stumbled over her own feet in Southampton and only came away with a 1-0 victory on the road, which has me, you know, that game alone has me thinking, you know, we're not, we don't score like we fucking do at Old Trafford when we're on the fucking road. We came back and we slapped around Crystal Palace, but who hasn't slapped around Crystal Palace this season? As you can see, United really hasn't played fucking anybody. They haven't fucking played fucking anybody. Now, on the other hand, Liverpool, who I'll fucking bring up here. They've had a, they've had a little bit more fucking of a difficult fucking schedule. Now, we've both played fucking Russian teams in our respected fucking Champions League fucking groups. We took care of Seska. As I just stated, Liverpool went into Spartak Moscow and came away with a 1-1 fucking draw, which is nothing to be ashamed about. Fixtures and results. All right. So they slapped around Arsenal. We can't forget about that, but like. Arsenal's just a letdown. Arsenal's not going to get in the top four this year. I do think Liverpool fucking squeaks into the top four before Arsenal. I think it's going to be United. Two Manchester clubs, Chelsea. That's the three clubs are going to be battling for the title this year. It's a three fucking dog race. It's a three horse fucking race. In my opinion, it's going to be a Manchester club. The Manchester will fucking hoist the fucking trophy again. 
this season. I think Chelsea will come third, and I think Liverpool will come fourth, and Arsenal's going to be on the outside looking in again, and this is the final season for Arsene Wagner. If he fucking knows what he's fucking doing, if he knows what's right for him, even though he's a very, very stubborn Frenchman, and I can see him being back next year and the year after that. He wants to break Sir Alex Ferguson's fucking record because he's just as egotistical as Sir Alex Ferguson was. He's just not as good as Sir Alex Ferguson. So Liverpool took care of Crystal Palace. They drew against Watford in that thrilling game, actually, to start this fucking season. I shouldn't forget that. That was a hell of a fucking game. I'll get to Watford in a little bit later. Then they fucking beat Crystal Palace at home. They beat Arsenal at home 4-0. They got smacked around by Manchester City 5-0, but there's nothing to be embarrassed about that. That really was their first fucking big road test of the season. I think they learned a lot from that, Liverpool. They obviously have to tighten the fuck up. Now, Robertson, in the left back. This fucking Scottish international is one of my favorite players. It sucks to have one of my favorite players play for Liverpool. Oh, right. I forgot. Leroy Fur fucking plays there, too. That fucking pisses me. I mean, uh, why not Leroy Fur? sorry. Georgino Wijnaldum. Georgino Wijnaldum fucking plays there, man. It fucking uh, it devastated me when he fucking made the transfer, made the switch over to fucking Liverpool. Then seeing Robertson make the switch over... To Liverpool from Hall City really fucking sucks. But do you really want to play for Hall City this season? I don't fucking think so. Now they drew Burnley 1-1 at home. They beat Leicester City away 3-2 in another thrilling match. And a lot of people think Liverpool that can't play defense should be fucking some goals in this game. But I'm telling you, man, it's a fucking derby. They're going to be fucking pumped to play. Supporters aren't going to take fucking no for an answer. You're going to feel the electricity in the fucking stadium. And uh, I hate betting overs when teams are coming back from a fucking the international break. I think it just takes a little bit for them to get fucking going. Especially when you're talking about the top clubs when all of their players were away. On the respected fucking international teams. And in their last match, they drew fucking Newcastle 1-1 on the road, which there's no harm in that. But the biggest thing I'm trying to point out is United hasn't fucking played anybody tough. So there's going to be a fucking eye-opener for Jose Mourinho and the boys. It's going to be an eye-opener for fucking uh, Romelu Lukaku when he doesn't have as much freedom when it's a fucking tight... You know, they're going to be fucking grabbing them. Like, Dejan Lover and fucking Stucks. And Joel Matip, in my opinion, is a fucking letdown. And uh, Klavner, the old fucking guy, shouldn't even be on fucking Liverpool if they have top four fucking aspirations or if they want to fucking make it through the group stage and Champions League and go on a little run. They really need to sure up that fucking back four. Fuck, they need to sure up that fucking back four. Just don't sure it up today. A 2-0 United victory would be fucking beautiful. Very fucking beautiful. I almost clicked on fucking, uh, actually, no, that was the uh, Seville and uh, Bilbao game. Sorry. But I do think Lukaku gets on the fucking score sheet tonight. It's kind of interesting to see Mario and Fellaini fucking getting a run out under fucking Jose Mourinho. And I thought Fellaini was going to be on his way out the fucking door. He's actually got the most goals by a midfielder in the Premier League. Going into the fucking match day, which is fucking quite, in, quite interesting. He's my whipping boy. We all have a fucking whipping boy. We all have a whipping boy, and Maroon Fellani is my fucking whipping boy. Man, do I ever like the fucking whip on Maroon Fellani. And Chris Smalling's not fucking far behind him. Just because I think Chris Smalling has so much fucking talent, and I support fucking the English national team, we need a fucking back four fucking back there, man. We need a pairing that we can fucking count on. Like, is Phil Jones really going to keep up this fucking run of form before he gets hurt? He's going to get hurt. It's Phil fucking Jones, man. He's going to get hurt. He ain't no Duncan Edwards, I can tell you that much, man. The comparison between him and Duncan Edwards when he first came over was hilarious. Because there's only one Duncan Edwards in the world, and his name was Duncan Edwards. The Duncan Edwards. If you don't know who he is, go look at him. Unfortunately, he had to fucking... Uh, he, he left us way too soon in the Munich tragedy. He left us way too fucking soon... But I've read a lot about him, read a lot about him through Bobby Charlton's fucking books. And what a magnificent talent this kid was. And Phil Jones ain't anywhere fucking near it. Ain't anywhere fucking near it, man. But United's back four has been playing fucking well. We've had a rotation going on at left back. We've seen Ashley Young. We've seen fucking uh, Darmian. We've seen Danny Blinn. 
None of them I'd like to see in a permanent fucking basis. Like, Ashley Young, though, still has that magnificent right boot. Still has that beautiful fucking right boot, man. He can send in some nice fucking crosses. But he ain't a left back. He ain't a left back. And we have him at playing left back. We have Valencia playing fucking right back. Makes us very vulnerable. Especially in fucking Champions League when we play the bigger fucking boys of Europe. It's going to make us very vulnerable. Because Valencia is not a fucking natural defender. He used to be a fucking winger. He's just never been the same since he broke his leg. But what a fucking goal he scored the fucking uh, the other week. Fucking one-time volley. One-touch volley in the fucking... It wasn't quite the top corner. He just basically powered it fucking past the fucking keeper. It was a fucking hell of a fucking goal. That was against Crystal Palace, I do fucking believe. But we are vulnerable when we play teams that have fucking... A real fucking wingers. That can fucking take a fucking fullback one-on-one. -on -one because Ashley Young can't fucking defend. Valencia can't fucking defend. Danny Blinn's fucking slow. Darmian, he's your typical Italian fucking uh, fullback. He does his job defensively. He just offers nothing going fucking forward. Now, Paul Pogba, he's a little bit banged up. Whether he plays today, I don't think he's playing today. So that's going to fucking change a lot of things in our fucking lineup. I should really go fucking check that out. See if we can get any confirmation on this. According to Manchester News, Paul Pogba is expected to return in two weeks. So we're going to have Herrera. We're probably going to have Herrera matched up with Matic, which has been a fucking pleasant surprise. Pleasant surprise. I'm a big fucking Michael Carrick fan. How, like, how can you not like Michael Carrick? He got fucking snubbed by the national team, basically. And he just kept fucking fighting. One of our best fucking transfers. We just seem to pluck the players from fucking Tottenham. Berbatov, Michael Carrick, you fucking name it. Hopefully Harry Kane. So he's probably going to be matched in the midfield, Herrera and fucking Matic, which should be able to fucking, you know, Liverpool doesn't have the best of midfields, you know. If they had a better midfield, maybe they could fucking disguise that weak back four, but they don't. I'm not a believer in Jordan Henderson. As you know, I like Gior Giorgino Wijnaldum, but he's more of a fucking offensive fucking midfield player. But having fucking Henderson in there, I'm not fucking big on it. You know, if you have Adam Lallana in there, it can create a little bit of creativity. You know, it starts to fucking shirt things up. But unfortunately, I don't think Adam Lallana is fucking playing. He's in Cutter fucking rehabbing. Fuck, man. See, that's another big blow for the national team. We need Lalana. We need Ali. We need Harry Kane all fucking healthy come fucking Russia fucking 2018. Still waiting for that FIFA investigation on Russia. Still think Russia fucking rigged the fucking qualifiers. But I think Liverpool's got a suspect fucking midfield. They have a suspect back four. I think United could fucking clip them for a goal or two. I think United should be able to shut some shit down quite possibly. But this ain't going to be a fucking blowout by any stretch. I like the under two and a half of this game for a fucking reason. It's going to be a tight, fucking chippy, fucking intense fucking affair at Anfield tonight. I'm looking forward to it. The ghosts the ghosts of United are fucking coming over. It was Friday the 13th. It, it would have been awesome if they played on Friday the fucking 13th. Actually, never mind, man. We don't play football on fucking Fridays. We stick to tradition. What am I saying? But the ghosts of United are fucking coming down to fucking Anfield. And we're there for a fucking purpose. Mourinho doesn't lose in the second season. He wins in the second season. Klopp, he just doesn't have the fucking players, man. He just doesn't have the fucking players. And I really think that his high press fucking style in Premier League fucking hurts him. Just because the counter attack, just because the pace and the physicality of the fucking Premier League is so fucking intense. Teams are fast, they're big, and they're fucking strong, man. They punch you on a counter-attack. doesn't matter if they're the Burnleys of the world or Huddersfields of the world or fucking Uniteds or fucking Chelsea's. Each team will fucking hit you on that counter-attack real fucking hard, man. If you leave yourself exposed, they'll fucking make you pay. That's why Josie Altidore doesn't play in fucking Europe anymore because they couldn't make them pay. That's why Sunderland's fucking relegated. Because they couldn't make people pay. 
But I really think Jurgen Klopp's style doesn't fucking suit the fucking Premier League. A lot of people think it would. Oh, it's exciting. The Premier League's so fast-paced. And they're going to play this high-press fucking style of game. And run. they look like a bunch of headless chickens running around the pitch sometimes, Liverpool. Sometimes less is more. Sometimes less is fucking more. You know, that's why I always like fucking uh, Fergie, man. 4-4-2 in the fucking league. 4-5-1 in fucking Champions League. Tone it back a little bit. We're playing against some fucking real good competition right now, man. We need to soak up a little bit of pressure and bang, hit him on a fucking counterattack. That's why Ronaldo and the fucking boys and Giggsy and fucking Rooney at his fucking finest. That's why Derb I mean, Berbatov was so fucking successful for United because we had the wingers and the midfielders to bang and hit him with a counterattack real quick. The Bulgarian guy could just kind of, you know, skip his way into the fucking box, pull off some magnificent fucking volley. And then, bam, he's on the fucking score sheet. But I do think Lukaku gets on the fucking score sheet tonight. I think he is going to bag the fucking winner for us. He played in fucking uh, Everton. He knows a little bit about the fucking rivalry. He's comfortable in this fucking situation. As I was saying, I don't know what rivalry or what fucking match I like better. The Manchester fucking Derby or United Liverpool. Well, Liverpool, your, uh, Liverpool supporters can say the same thing. I don't know what match I like better. Do I like the fucking Liverpool Derby? Do I like fucking Liverpool Everton better? Or do I like fucking Liverpool fucking United better? You know, is it the inner city battle or is it the fucking, uh, <laughs> all I could say, man, Liverpool fucking United. So remember, you can find my work on Twitter at kjohnstonmiked up. You can find my work on my website, kylejohnsonmiked Remember, if you're not laying money down the table, you're not winning. <laughs> to see the emotion on Keegan's face and his body language throughout this match was just fucking hilarious. You just don't see that in fucking North America. Kellymore! Thank you, Kellymore! Thank you. Thank you. Glory, glory, Man United.